second of your life, what you did and what you didn't do. Even on that day, not only the recording, the evidence is there, the own what your authors will give, give shahada, give witness. The own body always will give witness. Allah says in the Quran, Al Yawma Nakhtimu ala Afwahim, wa tukalimu na aidihim, wa tashadu wa tashadu arduluhum bima kaabu yaksiun. That today I will seal the mouth, you will seal the mouth. Al Yawma Nakhtimu ala Afwahim, wa tukalimu na aidihim. And their hands will talk to me. They will say, Lima Shahidum Alayna. Why are you giving witness against us? You are part of me. You belong to me. They will say, they would reply that today Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me the ability to speak. The power and the might and the deity who has given each and everything the ability to speak. If I was able to speak at that time, I would have told you, you are going to a sin, do not go. I would have told you, do not grab that thing, for grabbing that thing is a sin. But I wasn't given the ability to speak, that's why I could not say so. But now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving me the ability and I am saying. So, we have so many evidence will be brought forward. What will the person say then? Nothing. The person will not be able to move. He will not be able to, he'll be drowning in, in, in his sweat. For he will have all the evidence will be presented in front of him. Maliki Yomidi. So that is why my dear respected brothers and elders, we have to make preparation for that life that is going to, for that for that day, Malik Yom Indeed, that the day, the day in which we will be made to stand in front of you and give account for everything that every single thing that we have done. That is why the clever person is he who makes preparation for that time. Al Kaybi Suman Dal and Nasahu, Wa Abdul Lima Bad and Mo, Wal Ajizuman Atba and Nasahu Hawaha, Watamana Allah in Aman. That the clever person is he. Mandara nafsahu, who controls his nafs, wa amal al ima ba'd al maut, and who makes preparation and he does amal for the life hereafter. For that special time, for that time that he will have to give account. When all, nobody will be able to help him. Yawma yafirru al mar'u min afi, wa ummihi wa abi, wa sahibatihi wa bani, li kulli mri'in minhum yawma idin sha'nu yughni. That is the day where everybody will be running. A person will be running from his brother, from his mom, from his dad, from his wife and his children. Everyone will be running away from each other. No one will be able to help. Everybody will be just asking for one help on that day. No one will be, will be able to and no one will be prepared to sacrifice even one reward on that day. Everybody will be saying, Ya Nafsi, Ya Nafsi, what is going to happen to me? What is going to happen to me? Will I pass? Will I get the book of deeds in my right hand? Or if I'm the unlucky one, get the book of deeds on the left hand. <coughs> that is why my dear respected brothers and elders, now is the time to make that preparation. Now is the time is to bring in that taqwa into our lives. Because the taqwa is the driving force to do the good things and to abstain from the bad things. This is why the Sahaba, they had that taqwa. They had that fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter in what situation, they had Allah in front of them. Meaning, the awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to bring me in front of him and I will have to give account for every single action I have done. I will not be able to escape. 24 hour recording is being done on me. How am I going to escape from that? They were aware of that fact. And it was that taqwa and that piety made them, stopped them from committing sins even though no one was looking at them. Once a Sahabi, a Sahabi lady, she came to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, Tahirni Ya Rasulullah. Oh Prophet of Allah, purify me. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Why? What, what have you done? He said, I have committed adultery. Purify me, Ya Rasulullah. I have committed adultery. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam moved his face. She again came from the other side. Said, Ya Rasulullah, tahirni. Oh Prophet of Allah, purify me. Again, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam moved his face. She came from the other side. Said, Ya Rasulullah, tahirni. Again, she's saying, Oh Prophet of Allah, purify me. Prophet Allah moved the face to the other direction. Again, she came to that direction, all folk direction. She came and said to Prophet, Ya Rasulullah Tahir. Oh Allah, Ya oh, oh, Prophet of Allah, purify me. Give me the way so I can purify myself. And Prophet said, Okay. You have admitted that you have done something bad. But the child in your stomach has not done anything wrong. So go back and let that child be born. And once the child grows, obviously the child is in need of you for breastfeeding. So you breastfeed that child until the child, to reach that age, that, that child is able to eat by itself. Then come back to him. And she told him. She told the Sahabi, you do that, and told her to go. The Sahabi went, there is no register, no bail, oh, he's going, would she come back again? No, no security, no security, nothing. <coughs> Left her on her own, so you go. After two and a half years, this woman comes back again. What brings her back? There's no bail condition. There's no, uh, okay, you're in the register, you've got to report to the police for every step you move, every two weeks you've got to sign. There's nothing like that. What's making her coming back to the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa What's bringing her back? It is the taqwa and the piety and the fear of Allah. That's what's bringing her back to the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So she comes back with the child. How did she bring back the child? She puts a a piece of a morsel, a food, a piece of roti, a, 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 a bread in, her, in, the, in the child's mouth to show to Rasulullah look, the child is eating now by itself. Now can you imagine how much love that mother would have for that child? But what is overpowering that is the fear of Allah Rasul, is the fear of Allah. That accountability that I will have to one day Stand in the court of Allah. Malik Yawmuddin. I will have to stand there and give account for every single thing that I have done. I may escape the court of this world, but I will not be able to escape the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he has 24 hour recording. Everything has been recorded. <laughs> we may go to the toilet, escape the security, but we can't escape from Allah's security. Impossible. Even the bodily organs will give, will, will give witness against that person on that day of judgment for every single bad action that he's done. <coughs> so again, this child, this, this woman, nobody brought her back. If she wanted to not to come back, nobody would have forced her. Even Prophet Allah would have told her, that, where's that woman gone? Would have said nothing. And she comes back to the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, here's the child. The child is able to eat by itself. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave her the punishment. After when she died, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was about to do her janazah. 
Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu came and tried to stop Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rasulullah, what are you doing? This is a woman who committed adultery and you're going to do the janazah? Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, look at the reply of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave. She said, oh Umar, the tawbah that she had done, if one tenth of that tawbah was to be distributed to the people of Medina, every single person of Medina will, will be forgiven. This is the tawbah that she had done. So what brought her to do that? It was a taqwa to the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is what me and me and you need. There is no police in your house. There is nobody watching you. Who is watching you? It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember every single step you're taking. Maybe towards gambling. Maybe to drink alcohol. Maybe doing adultery. Maybe trying to deceive somebody. Remember, who is watching you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you have that awareness, you have that fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then nobody needs to tell you to do anything. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do the stuff with you.